Yo guys, what's going on? Thanks for coming back to another episode of EV Music. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is where we do a lot of technology and music related stuff to see how they combine to make something awesome. If you guys don't know, I'm in college right now and that whistle is like the bell between classes. And like, kind of, it's kind of a tradition here. I wanted to try and imitate that whistle and see if we can make an app with oscillators using AudioKit that kind of imitates the frequencies of that whistle. Because there's three frequencies, so we should be able to imitate them, right? And the reason I wanted to make a video like this is because there's been a couple of people coming to me with AudioKit questions, you know, how, I, how do I make this app? And I thought you and me should get to the same level because I'm not even as advanced as you may think. So let's do this kind of hello world tutorial, which is just making oscillators for audio kit. It's something that's easy, but it's also something that's gonna help us understand how this framework works. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so what you guys wanna do is you wanna download a program from the Mac App Store. You can download this on your Mac called Xcode. And Xcode is what's called an integrated development environment. It's gonna help us develop our iPhone app. And once you have downloaded Xcode, then you can go ahead, open it up, this welcome window should pop up, and that's when you're gonna create a new project. Next, when that window pops up, you wanna select single view app, and then you wanna fill out all this data, so name your project something, and then make sure you have your developer account hooked up, so you can see mine says Jeff Murray, and then we're gonna be using Swift as our programming language, and make sure all those boxes are checked, and click next and create. One important thing to check is once this opens up, you wanna check and make sure Xcode has what's called auto signing enabled. And in order to do this, you need to have a developer account, which you can sign up for a free one. So sign up for a free Apple developer account and then make sure Xcode uses your developer account just like this to auto sign your app. And now it will be able to build on your iPhone. Next, we're going to open up your web browser and we're going to go to audiokit.io to download the AudioKit frameworks. Remember, this is the tool we're going to be using to create sound out of our app. And in this case, we want to imitate that Georgia Tech whistle. That's how we're going to do that with this framework. So we want to download those framework files on their website, just like I show in this video. I'll also link it in the description below. And once you click on that download link, it should download a zip file. You want to go ahead on Mac and double click that zip file. It will open up into a folder. Go inside that folder, you'll find two files that are dot frameworks. You want to go ahead, drag those into your Xcode project and make sure you have copy items if needed selected. Very important because this is going to allow us to use those frameworks in our project, which are needed to build this app. It's also very important that these frameworks actually show up under the linked frameworks and libraries tab right there. So just double check that. Next, you're gonna to wanna to click on that build settings tab and then scroll down, look for where it says linking and other linker flags. And then once you find that, you're gonna click on it. You can go ahead, press return. And then what we're gonna type in is dash L C++. This is gonna allow us to tell the compiler that we have some C++ code, because we do, it's in the audio kit framework, so we need to link that. And once you do that, you'll notice that under it will have debug and release, and it says the same thing, so it should look like that. And then we can go ahead and build the project to test and see if it works. Let's also go into our view controller file and test and see if we can import the audio kit framework. Then we'll build it to see if we get any errors. When you build your project for the first time, it will take a while to load. And also when that iPhone simulator pops up, it will take a while for it to load. But once it does, you'll see a white screen because that's the default code. We haven't done anything yet. So that's what you should see. And that means you're good. So now we're gonna move on and talk about some key terms that are gonna be important for this video. So our first term, a class, is a set or category of things having some property or attribute in common and differentiated from others by kind, type, or quality. And one example 
for this is for those of you who play this game Dungeon and Dragons out there, they have different character classes. And although I don't play the game, I assume that this would be a good thing because it's kind of how you classify certain characters. Another example for just the everyday person is we all know there's different car classes like there's premium there's a standard suv you got your minivan so these would all be good examples of classes how you actually create a class in code well it's pretty simple we just use the class keyword so we type class and then a space in the class name which it should be the same as your file name and then all you have to do after that is add some braces and this is where we're actually going to define the class Next we have what's called properties, and these are things you can add to a class. And properties are an attribute, quality, or characteristic of something. So one example of this is colors, obviously. And this insect right here, its color is yellow, hence why we call it a yellow jacket. And adding these to your class are pretty simple. You wanna type the word either var or let before you're declaring a property. Let is just for constants, so numbers or whatever that doesn't change and then same thing again you just name your property and you use a colon and a space to name its type so in this case we have an integer just a regular number and a float which is a decimal and then after that you can actually use an equal sign assignment to assign a value to that property our third term is what's called methods and if you remember some of my previous videos, you should go watch those, by the way, the audio kit tutorial on how to make a piano app. We talked about functions in the first video and methods aren't really that different than functions. It's just that methods have a particular class and they can also be called using dot syntax because we can type the class name before and then dot and then one of its methods. And that would do pretty much the same thing as just calling the function inside of the class. One last thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the meat of the video is that classes can actually inherit from other classes. So this class that we just created, view controller, we can actually do the same kind of syntax that we use to declare a type. We just type a colon and then after that we type the class that we want our class to inherit from. So in this case, we want our class to inherit from UI view controller. And again, in my first video of that audio kit series that I recently uploaded, I talked about what the view controller class actually is. And it's basically the window through which we view our app because otherwise we couldn't really see anything. So that's what it is for the iPhone. And another important principle of that is when you inherit from a class, you actually gain all of the functions and properties of that class. So basically now what I can do is I can use a method from the class UI view controller called view did load. And there's another principle to this. When we type the override keyboard, override func feed view did load, we're actually overriding the code and the function. So this is what code we can do when our view actually loads. So the default is for it to do nothing as you just saw, but when we override it, it's gonna actually run the code we want it to run. So that's why we do that. I'll go into that a little bit more in depth in my future videos, but for now, just keep that in mind. We're putting in our own custom code so that we can create our own custom view controller. So we just wrote a lot of code and learned a lot. So. What I want you guys to do now is take a break from the computer, go outside or just go around your house and find one of your favorite objects. Ready, go. All right, so here's one of my favorite objects here in real life. It's called my unicycle. I love this thing, it's just amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead, get on it, ride it. All right, ready? There we go, we're on it. Whee, it's fun. So yeah, just, use your object, have some fun with it for a while, then we'll get back to coding in a little bit. Alrighty guys, I hope you had fun using your objects. I had fun riding my unicycle, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the playground, so just create a new playground, call it whatever you want, and in the beginning of this playground, just delete everything, and then 
what I want you guys to do, so you had your real life object, I want you to write a class about that object and just name the class your object. And then this class should have at least one property that applies to your object. And then just ret have a function that returns some info about that property. So I'm gonna make a class called unicycle and then my first property is going to be a variable because I want to show you guys how you can change this. So this variable is going to be called wheel number and it's going to be equal to zero at first and you'll see why. And then we're going to have a function print wheel number and inside we have the print function and my unicycle has plus my wheel number and that many wheels. And then if we go outside the class You'll notice that if we try to actually set our property, change it, we can't do that. And we also can't run our function. It will say like, un, it doesn't recognize this identifier because it has no idea what we're talking about. So what we have to do is we actually have to create something called an object. And an object is a variable which refers to a specific thing. and we're gonna create what's called an instance here. And this is a type of object reference. So we're actually going to, it's an instance of a class is an object with a specific type or class. So we're gonna create a variable called my unicycle. And we're gonna, just by doing this syntax right here, we're gonna set that variable to our unicycle class. So that way we just created a unicycle object called my unicycle. And with this new object, we can actually access all of the properties and functions of that class using dot syntax. So if I wanted to change the wheel number, I could do my unicycle dot wheel number equals one. Also, you notice that I changed the wheel number in this to string parentheses wheel number. And that's because that red text right there is what's called a string. And our wheel number was of type integer. So we need to actually convert that wheel number into a string in order to add it to a string. So that's why we did the string function, which can convert an integer inside the parentheses to a string. So that's why we did that. Didn't want to confuse you guys there. So just wanted to clarify that. And I will change that property to one and then my unicycle.print wheel number. And that's going to print our wheel number. So let's just run it. Go ahead, see what happens. And as you'll notice, it says my unicycle has one wheel. And then if we wanted to change that to two, we can totally do that, even though unicycles usually only have one wheel. So let's just set it equal to two. We run it again, and we notice it prints my unicycle has two wheels. So that's an important lesson. I want you guys to try that on your own, just so you can get a feel of how we're gonna be coding this oscillator app, because this is gonna be very important now, I know you guys came here to this video to hear the whistle, so we're going to code the whistle. We're going to make our whistle. So what we're going to do in order to do that, this whistle at my school has three main frequencies. So we're going to try to recreate those frequencies using oscillator objects. And those are just sine waves of a certain frequency, so it'll have a certain pitch. And AudioKit has those. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go back to our view controller class. And up at the top near those ints we created in the float, we're gonna, below that, we're gonna create three new oscillator objects. And these are going to be equal to an instance of the class, AK oscillator. And make sure you have those parentheses at the end or else the class won't be initialized. So make sure you have that and then name the oscillators different names also. It's also, worth mentioning that if you don't have that audio kit framework imported into your view controller code it's not going to work it's not going to recognize that ak oscillator class so make sure you have that imported as well next we're going to create a mixer object so for those of you who are familiar with the music production world there's these things called mixers which allow you to combine multiple channels of audio and get a full sound and if you're not familiar with mixers, this device just allows us to mix the oscillators together so we get a final audio of all three of those oscillators together. So that's why we create this mixer object, so that way we can do that. 
One important thing to note here is in that view did load function, we can actually pass our oscillators through our mixer once the view has loaded and this will allow us to connect our oscillators to our mixer. And why can we do this? Well, it's the principle that most of these audio kick classes inherit from another class called AK node. And if you watch my previous audio kit tutorials, we talked about nodes and how they're things, devices to connect other things to each other. And this is how we get all this audio processing because we have a whole chain of nodes that goes through each other to get all these effects. So it's the same principle here. You can connect all of your oscillator nodes to your mixer node by using this syntax like this. You set your mixer node equal to an AK mixer again, but in those parentheses, you pass all of your oscillators as arguments. After you've connected your oscillator nodes to your mixer node, then we can actually set the mixer's volume, which is a property of that object. So remember how we discovered that earlier with your object class that you created of your favorite object. We can actually ac access the mixer volume, which is a property of it. So I'm gonna set that to 0.7. And luckily my last audio kit series, we had to do a lot of complicated stuff to get the actual audio to the device's speakers here. It's pretty simple. AudioKit deals with that all for you. And AudioKit actually has an output property which you need to set to the node which you want to act as the output. So in that case, we want our mixer to output to the device's speakers. So we just do AudioKit.output equals mixer, which is our mixer object. Now to actually start AudioKit, we need to use the start method from AudioKit. But if you ever see a method where it says throws like that in the Swift suggester thingy, then we need to have what's called a handle. So we'll write do and then some brackets. So it's gonna do the following code, but if there's an error for some reason, we write something in the catch brackets, which there we'll write print audio kit did not start. And then in our do brackets, we're gonna write try because we're gonna try to do this and then audio kit dot start. So if for some reason something fails, it will go to audio kit could not start, but if it is able to, then it will just start audio kit normally. All right, we're almost at the end. So what we need to do outside of the do and catch, make sure you're outside of those brackets, is we need to set frequency properties of each oscillator. So the first one, the first frequency in our whistle sample was found to be 442 Hertz so we set that to 442 and then second property is going to be 569 and then third property is going to be 760 and then after that we just initialize each oscillator by doing oscillator name which one oscillator one two three and then start and that's going to start them up after you're sure that your project doesn't have any errors Go ahead, click that play button. It's gonna run it and make sure you have a device selected. And then it will open up that device once it builds. And it will take a while the first time to load. And once the app actually launches, it will be white screen for a little bit, but then we'll wait a little bit and we should hear. So there you have it guys, we just successfully created an app which can imitate the sound of that whistle using AudioKit. AudioKit is an amazing tool so I recommend you check out their website in the description below. They have lots of great resources there. And if you need any help, I will link the final code for this project down in the description below. And otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And I have some cool videos coming up in the future, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned for those. And I'm always open to ideas, so let me know if you have any, and I'd be happy to make a video about it. But otherwise, see you guys in the next one. Peace.